Okay, Erev Tov, everyone, and it is Chodesh Tov. Tonight is the first day of Mar Cheshvon, and uh, we're going to discuss Parshas Noach. It's good I keep records to see what I did last year, so I won't repeat the same things, uh, even though I don't think anybody would remember what I said, but I'm sure you all have your notes, and you'd probably see it. I imagine Kathy has it in her file or and, and Janet as well, they have from last year, the files of everything. And they say, oh, he said this last year. So therefore I have to keep a file. And it's definitely a different topic. And I think it's gonna be very exciting. Hashem gave me some good information to share with you. Let us start with a medrash. As you see over here, some of it's in Hebrew. I couldn't get it all translated, but it's a good place for us to start our discussion here. There is a concept called Tzadik Yesod Olam. There's such a concept, there's a Pusuk in the Navi that says this, which simply means a Tzadik is a Yesod, is a foundation of the world, which really means in a much broader tense is that uh, this is a person who really, the world really hangs on such a person. And the world, um, uh, survives and flourishes and develops further because of such a talk. Okay, there's such a concept. It's not given to too many people, very few people. You got to be a real, real talk. So the Medrash tells us about this. I'm going to, uh, I got the one line in English, but I'm just going to read you just a little bit of the Hebrew. So the Medrash is like this. Roy Hoya Avram Avinu Lihibare Tchila Laodamarish. It was fitting that first man, that Avram, should have been the first person created. He should have been created first. Why didn't God do it? Hashem said, If I create Adam, uh, Avram first, if he messes up, there'll be nobody who could fix it up. He's like my last line of defense. So what am I going to do, says Hashem? I'm going to create first man, first. Because if he messes up, then Avram will come and be able to fix it up. And now the Medrash concludes and says, There were three righteous people called Yesod Olam, and they are. Adam Arishon, first man, Noah, and Avram. This is what the Medrash is saying. Now, you got to realize to be called a tzaddik yisod olam is not a small accolade. And when God created the world, he envisioned that the world would come to perfection. And he first thought it was going to be from Adam Arishon. And Adam Arishon was a tzaddik Yisod Olam. But of course, as we know what happened, things didn't work out that well. We found out in last week's parsh it didn't work out that well. And uh, then God waited 10 generations, as we learned in the end of last week's parsha. And Hashem waited 10 generations to come upon another individual who has the potential of being a tzaddik Yisod Olam. And that was Noah. Well, we will see uh, through today's class that after Noah is 10 generations, and we see that things really didn't get so much better. And uh, Avram, after 10 more generations, he became the one who was that Hashem waited 20 generations for. He was the one who turned the tide in the correct way, and the Jewish people descend for him. So now we have to ask the following question. How do we know he's a tzaddik yesod olam? Because last year, we learned the very first passage of Noah that, uh, that Noah is tzaddik. He was a tzaddik. The Torah says he was a tzaddik. Very few people does the Torah say he was a tzaddik. So therefore, here's the question we're going to deal with tonight. Now, the Almighty did find Noah to be a tzaddik. And despite the fact that he decided to destroy the entire world, the Torah says, Noah found favor in the eyes of the Lord. And Noah became the next person about whom the Almighty wished to base the world. 
the Rabboni Shalom, as it were, started over with Noach, a new world. Noach was to be the Tzadik Yisod Olam. Noach was saved. He saved the world. He repopulated the world. Those who came after him are not called children of Adam. They are called children of Noah. We are direct descendants of Noah because all other descendants of Adam were destroyed. How did this happen to Noah? How did this person have such potential and whom the Almighty saw such potential not end up as the Tzaddik Yesod Olam? Now, the fact of the matter is, if you just look in the Psukim, you would not know all this. But we're giving you the, the, the heads up right in advance to show you that, that there's something that did not work out so right. And that's what tonight's class is going to deal about, deal with. And therefore, we're going to focus on this Pusuk here. And let me give you the background where this Pusuk, chapter 9, verse 20. It's a really short Pusuk. This is after Hashem told Noah, I'm going to destroy the world. And Noah spends 120 years building the ark. And, he, and the flood comes and everybody gets killed. And he spends a whole year in the ark feeding all the animals, saving civilization. Fine. Then after a year, the flood stops. Hashem allows Noah to leave, he gives them a blessing, and he says, go out now and repopulate and re-civilize the world. Okay, that's where we're at. So now we begin with this Pasuk over here, and let's have, uh, let's have Jay read just this line. That's all, this one line, nice and loud. Rehel Noach Ish Adama Bayita. Correct. Okay. So we got a few words that are a little bit difficult over here. Uh, let's go through and see one word I gave you here. The word, it's really karem. Remember, karem. sometimes when a word comes at the end, the nakudos change. So a karem is a vineyard. What? Okay. A karem. What? Why is it written karem? Is it written what? Karem, Karem, but the word is Karem. Oh. We have a rule that often when a word is at the end of a Pasuk, the Nikut, some of the dots change for grammatical reasons. Oh. So the word really is called a Karem. Okay. Uh, there are places in Israel called Karem B'Yavne, right. the vineyard in Yavne. A Karem is a vineyard. But in this Pusuk, since it's at the end of the Pusuk, a lot of time, remember we had Mitzrayim? If it's at the end of a Pusuk, it's Mitzrayim. So that's just, that's just the way it works out. Uh, the name Ephraim, if it's at the end of a Pusuk, is Ephraim. So don't let that so mislead you. Kerem is a vineyard. Okay. So let's look, the first word here, no, you have no way of knowing what this word means. You have no background to it. And it's not, it's a difficult word and Rashi's gonna have to translate it for us. So don't worry about it. But let's go beyond that. Noah, we know what that means. Yeah. What is ish ho adomami? Adama is fruit. Ish no, is it's not earth. Man, man of the earth. Man of the earth. The ground. The ground. Yes, you make you make a bracha bore priyadama on vegetables. Oh, okay. That's what got you thinking vegetable or fruit. But really, the word adama is earth, right? And that's where the word adam comes from. Adam, why was adam called adam? Because he comes from the earth. Now we have a construct pronoun. Ish is a man. Adama is the earth. So Ishadama, the man of the earth. So Noah and the adjective, man of the earth. Okay, here's a word I maybe should have helped you with. Vayita Karim. So and he, we'll take a wild guess. And he created or he close, made or close or he desired. Planted. 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 Vayita. 
Okay, we say in the Bracha Satora, the second Bracha, Jevachaye Olam Not Tavis Ocheno, an internal life he planted inside of us. So Noah, the man of the earth, and he planted a vineyard. Okay, so he goes out of the ark after he offers a, a, a sacrifice to God. And after God promises him that he's, you know, he's going to be okay, the very first thing he does is he plants a vineyard. Okay. Now here's the critical word, vayochel. Vayochel is a word you're not familiar with. And um, the the issue, it, what makes the word so difficult, if we want to say. No, what is this Pusik? Forget about the word Vayoho. What's the Pusik telling me? What do I see in this Pusik? Give me in your own words, what's the Pusik saying? He created a he created a vineyard. No, okay. Very good. Very good. So let me tell you how we could have worded this. Let's take this word out. Take it out. Okay. And now what I'm gonna do, I'm afraid to do this because I might not be able to get it back. But let, let's. Let's live dangerously, okay? I'm going to cut. I'm going to put it somewhere else. Uh, I'll put it over here. I don't know where it's going to go. We'll have to find it. It's somewhere. I lost it. <laughs> anyway. Well, just to undo it. it. What? I lost it. still have it. I know, but I... Okay, now I'm going to take this word. I'm going to cut it. And I don't know if it's going to work. Now, you look, go. At that. look at that Pusik now. Now, read the Pusik now. Okay, now this, didn't that Pusik just sing beautifully? Doesn't it read beautifully? Yeah. Noach, and Noach planted. Who is Noach? A man of the sure. land. He planted a vineyard. Isn't that a beautifully constructed puzzle? Yeah, but yeah, it, sure. But God didn't want it that way. So now let's see if we can get it all back. Hang on. I, I do. hope so. I do. Let's, let's hope. Okay. One more. One more. We're back to where we started. Okay. So now. What's the obvious question? What is your hell name? Your hell name? What, 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 we, I just constructed a beautiful bus for you, didn't I? Yeah. And now, and, and now the whole cons, construction of a bus is out of whack. What does the word vayochel mean? Well, in standard biblical Hebrew, it would mean, and he began. And he began. We have this in the Bible many places. Vayachel well, means to begin. By the seven years of plenty, it talks about that same verb. So what is that really saying? And read it this way, it really doesn't read well at all. And Noah began, okay, Noah, the man of the field, began by Yitakarim, and he planted a vineyard. Well, of course we know he began. It's the first thing he's doing. You understand? He just, he's out of the air. God says, now go, go, populate the world. So don't you think the first thing he's going to say is the beginning? Okay. And I showed you how the Pusik would sing so beautifully without that word. And we'd be missing nothing. Okay, you with me, guys? Mm -hmm. So obviously this was disturbing Rashi in a very great way. Okay. Now, what are the three things Rashi's going to look at? Well, look at one title. He wants to tell us what's this word doing over here. That's one thing. Number two, do we not know who Noah is already? Sure. Is, is it the first time we've been introduced to him? No. No, this was in chapter nine. We started the Parsha in chapter six. And right away we're told about Noah. What do you know about Noah? He's a tzaddik. He was a tzaddik of his generation. He had three sons and this and that. We talk about Noah the whole time. Is, is, he not, is he a stranger? He's not a stranger. We know him very well by now. So God gives him this 
adjective, the Isha Adam, a man of the land. So Rashi's going to want to know why do we have to put that in? Maybe that's why he planted it. Right? Now, if you really want to know, how could we have done this Pasuk? Well, you know, if we were to just take these few, how what would be the least amount of words we could use to write this puzzle? The least amount of words to get the idea across. Tell me how many words and what are they? Noah. One Noah. word is, is three. Three. Okay, what are the three? Tell me in order what they are. Isha Adama Karim. No, 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 no. That's oh. not. No, I had the Ma Karam. No, I had this. By Tach Karam. Vayita Noah Karam. Yes. And Noah planted a vineyard. No, but it's specific here. Ish Kadama. What do I need it for? Well, obviously, he's a man of the land. He's planting a vineyard. Well, maybe it's explaining why he chose to do that first, because he was a man of the earth. Well, if I remember from, I don't know if it was last year or the previous year, the vineyard should not have been his first priority. So it sounds exactly. like, yeah. Uh, yeah, hell means that in the beginning, he planted a vineyard, and that should not have been his priority. And since he's a man of the earth, he had capabilities of growing other things that are more important. Okay, all right, so your memory serves you well. Okay, so, and again, but you, you have to understand where do we get all this from? Is I'm, just helping, I'm helping you to understand where the commentaries have the right to comment. You always gotta look at what's the easiest way to write the puzzle. The easy way is by Yita Noah Karen, and that would give us all the information we need. Okay, so this Isha Dhamma is screaming out something, and Vayachel is screaming out something. So what's it screaming out? So let's take a look at the Rashi. And so this is, um, well, okay, so number one, what does this word mean? Number two, why is he called Isha Dhamma? And you should think of another question. He planted a vineyard, yeah? How was he able to plant a vineyard if God destroyed everything? Good question. He brought the <laughs> he, destroyed, he destroyed all the people. What? There was still land. The dove went out from the ark and it found a leaf. Uh-huh. How did it find a leaf if everything was destroyed? Yeah. A tree grew in a week. We got a few more people here. I didn't see. We got some. Are you Mr. iPhone? Who's Mr. iPhone? Mr. iPhone, I think, is Sue. Jody Eisenberg. Sue is I thought I was hearing Steve Scutaro. Oh, that's Jody Scutaro. Yeah. Yeah. Jody. Yeah. I'm I think I've heard Esther on the line too. I gotta make this a little bigger so I can see more people. Hang on. We're yeah, together. Yeah. Now, now. We should have a few more people here. Okay. okay. A few of them are showing. Steve, but I think. Uh, I think Sue. I think Sue is iPhone. Okay. Fine. I'm not sure. Good. So the question is, where where did he? So so what are you saying? You saying what? There just happened to be a, a vine over there. No, he brought it with him in the table. How do you know he that? How do you know that? Well, don't you need seeds to plant the vineyard? One second. Chaya, Chaya, how do you know he brought it into the table? First of all, you have given us a sheet. I think it's mentioned here. <laughs> oh, you're cheating. You're cheating. That's okay. Yeah, geez, she's using your resources wisely. Okay. I give you the sheet not to study in advance, but to do it together. It's fine. It's all good. It's all good. Okay. So this is the three things Rashi is dealing with. So let's look at each Rashi one at a time. So the word by Yochel. So Rashi says, a saw at small Chulin. Now you see the word Chulin has Ches Lamed, same root as Vayochel, Ches Lamed. And if something, you know, what do you call a weekday? We know we have Yom Rishon, Yom Sheni, Yom Shabbat. In Hebrew, we call a weekday, the day is called Chol. Chol. That's a weekday. 
is a yom chol. Chol has learned ches lamed. What would you say is the relationship by definition? How would you compare the six days of the week that are called Chol and Shabbos, which is called Kodesh? So if Shabbos is called Kodesh, which means holy, how would you define the word Chol for the other six days of the week? Profane? Not holy. Well, not holy. Not holy. And what would that be? What's an English word for not holy? Monday. Oh, I'm reading on you think Monday. Mon- I think Monday. 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 Meaning to say, not that anything's bad about it. There's nothing bad about Wednesday. It's ordinary. It's ordinary. It's not holy. It's not holy. It's and that's what the word Monday means. Profane, I think, is more like profanity. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like it's like the opposite of holiness. Right. Chol, chulin, chulin, just like there's a, there's a tractate in the Talmud called chulin. You know what it talks about? When the Beis Amigash, when you bring an animal offering, that's called kachu, that's called holy animals. If you go in your own city and take a cow and slaughter it in a kosher way and eat it for supper, that's called chulin. So what would that be? That's mundane, right? So this is the root word. So Rashi is saying, you know what the Torah is saying? Vayoch el Noach. Noach made himself mundane. He made himself mundane. He mundane. Somebody's uh, got their the speaker around and I'm hearing myself twice. Some, Noach will, bar, will create a verb. Noach mundaned himself. Okay, just like you ordain someone to be a, a, a king or a priest, with a, he mundaned himself. That's what the Torah is saying. By Yochel Noach, Isha Adamo. Noach, the man of the field, mundaned himself. And this is what um, you remembered, um, Jay. Shehoyalol, he should have, La Asok, engaged. Chila first, Benetia with a planting, Acheres, another one. He should have began with another type of plant. What would you suggest? Food. I know the answer. Food. Remember it. It was uh, wheat. Wheat. <laughs> what's, the, what's the basic staple mankind needs? Should have planted wheat. Should have planted wheat. So what? So is this a positive statement or a negative statement? It's a negative. It's a negative. He profaned himself. So the question is going to be, what exactly was so terrible about this? So you're saying, well, he should have done other things first. Well, let's think about this for a minute. Let's see what it says in Mishlei. It says, give wine to the bitter of soul. Okay, now, would you say that Noah had an easy year? No. Do we have any idea the types of challenges he went through in that year? He and his, he only had seven other people on the, in the boat. Eight people to feed the largest zoo in the history of the world. All right. And they were not government workers who could say, well, it's Friday, five o'clock. I'll see you later on Monday. You know, that's one of the things I told the people at the York Region Health when they wanted me on Monday or Tuesday to send a letter out to the synagogue that somebody had COVID. I said, guys, you're three days too late. (laughs) <laughs> I didn't say it in a nasty way, but it's like, if you guys knew, I didn't say this, you guys knew on Friday afternoon that somebody had COVID, why'd you wait till Monday to call? I know what the answer would be, because we don't work on Sundays and Saturdays. I guess COVID isn't that dangerous, I guess. You know, well, the rabbis have to work seven days a week. Anyway, be that as it may, so... Uh, uh, that that's the uh, the idea over here. So 
So what, 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 in other words, he had no government working conditions. He didn't have a union and say to the animals, listen, I'm taking off two days. You guys take care of yourselves. So he was nonstop. You know, the animals eat at different hours of the day. You know that. And it worked out that, you know, that every animal, and if, and what happened? He came just a few minutes late for the lion. What happened? <laughs> he almost became the lion's dinner. And he walks out of the ark limping because the lion wounded him, took a good smash at him, and he w- was was wounded the entire time he was in the ark. So uh, this was, and and they also they made a they made a they instituted since the world was destroyed they would have no intimacy in the ark for the entire year. So no wine, no women, no song. Just working your heads off for these dumb animals. Okay. Now, you know, they say, and I'm not putting down the frontline workers. I'm not putting them down at all. They deserve all of our credit, you know. But who was in the real first ICU unit in the world? It was not. This was an intensive care unit. If he didn't feed them, they died. The whole world was sitting on his shoulders. And he got no breaks. So, you know, don't you think the guy's entitled to a little time off? So this is the question. Why does not planting something else first make him into human? Why does that make him mundane? That's the question we'd like to look at. That's point number one. Okay. Now, let's just take a look at the next Rashi. We'll come back to everything. The next Rashi, Ish Ha'adama. So what does Ish Ha'adama mean? So like, what does it mean, a man of the field? What does it mean, a man of the field? What does it mean, a man of the field? So Rashi says, it says it's Adonai Ha'adama, the master of the field. Like he's in control. He's in control. He, he's, he's like the king of the world because he's the one in charge of the world. Ramban does not agree with that explanation. And he says like this, the word ish here is used to signify a relationship, which means to say that he felt very connected to the world uh, for many reasons, for many reasons. He felt that, uh, you know, that without me, there, there is no world and I've got to do what I can to make the world be a, be a, a, a populated place. I got to uh, make sure that things growing over here. And really, it means that it, that became his definition of self. His life was the earth. And therefore, we know before the flood, Noah invented something. You know what Noah invented? Farm equipment. Farm oh. equipment. Which means until Noah came along, you know how they plowed with their hands comes along Noah and he says you know there was somebody else who invented metal but that was Tuval Cain if you remember he used the metal to create weapons Noah said I'm going to take the metal and make tools out of it and that was something that would help society and indeed it did so we see now that he's coming into the, the world is completely uh desolate, he has to take the work of the earth very seriously because their lives depend on it. So this is why he's called the Isha Adama. Okay, let's move on. We're going to put it all together. And then finally, Vayita Karet. Okay, so since uh, Chaya did her homework, this Rashi is not going to tell you anything too exciting. Rashi says, Nichnas. What does Nichnas mean? When he entered Lateva into the ark, there's the word entered right there, Nichnas. Hichnis Imo. He brought with him Zmoros, vine branches, the Se'enim, and shoots of fig trees. Fig trees. Fig trees, shoots, like the shoots, not the whole fig tree, the shoots. You know, you plant the shoot in. So why is Rashi telling us this? 
The obvious answer is what? What is Rashi telling us? What question was Rashi answering? That is premeditated. Well, well, that's where, why he was. Uh, why didn't he plant that other stuff first? No, he that he is Nata when he came out. That's what he planned. What he brought in. And the question is, where where did he have? Where how did he have planted a vineyard? So the answer is, he brought it with him. He brought the vines with him. Now look carefully, everybody, at this Rashi again. Look carefully and tell me what is very not good with this Rashi. Or better yet, tell me which two words, if you look at them, would bring out a question in your mind. Yes. Why it says he chnist imo? It's not a... No, he brought it with him. That's okay. When he went into the table, he brought it with him. That's fine. That's our problem. Remember, Rashi wants to know where did he get the vines from, right? By Yitak Karen, he, he, he planted a vine, a vineyard. Where did he get the vines from? Well, no problem. He brought it with him. But there's something else in this Rashi that should be bothering you. Well, wouldn't he need wheat to feed the animals? Wouldn't he need hay and other things to feed the animals? Okay, that's one question. But what else should be bothering you? So it's like before he, he read had the whole already... Rashi. Read the whole Rashi. Read the whole Rashi. Come on, guys, it's staring you in the face. I'm not going to let you I'm not going to tell the answer until you figure it out guys I'm sorry I'm putting pressure on you thus the word ish here is used to signify a relation no not this 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 right oh. here this is not this where the problem is these words there's two words that should be shocking you they're the same which words Zmorot. Zmorot, Zmorot are vines. Zmorot are vines. There's nothing wrong okay. with that. Okay. Azichurei. Yichurei te'enim. Shoots yes. of fig trees. Who in the heck is talking about figs? Yeah, we're only talking about vines. Yeah, so that's what I was waiting for someone to ask. <laughs> it's this. I mean, yeah. Rashi, Rashi should have stopped right over here. Take these words out. Okay, we're going to do it again, guys. Boom. Oh, that's a beautiful Rashi. Isn't this yeah. fun? I could just, you know, change the Rashi at will. When he went into the ark, he brought vines with him. Huh, perfect. Why is Rashi adding? Uh, undo, undo, baby. I'm looking for the undo. Where's the undo here? Edit, undo. What is what are the what are the things doing here? So you gotta read every Rashi carefully. What, what are the could fig trees provide him with shade? <laughs> they provide him with something much better than that. You'll see in a minute. Clothing covering? I don't but know. The question is, question is, how does Rashi know he brought fig shoots? Figs. How does he know that? Like, where is he getting this from? So there's three answers the commentaries give. <laughs> Listen to this. And you can pick which answer you like. I like all three of them. What did Rashi say beforehand? Rashi said, why was he starting with the vines? He should have planted something else, right? Right. Now, you only can plant something else if there's something else to plant. Yeah, it's a fix. So what's the something else? Figs. 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 Ah. Now, we're not sure about what other species have, but one thing we know for sure, what was the other? There's only one other plant that we know about in the Torah. Wheat. Nope, it's not in the Torah yet. We're only up to chapter nine. There's only one plant we know about. Carrot. The what? No, That's it's right. not in the Torah. Not in the Torah. Those are midrashim. Carob? The apple? In the Bible. Oh, somebody just said. Somebody just said apple. No, it's not in the Bible. 
לא, לא. לא מזהה. ענבים. עץ החיים. לא, לא, הספציפיק, הספציפיק מה? עץ החיים. לא, מה זה? אתה לא יודע מה זה? לא. כשהם עושים, מה הם עושים להם? פיג, פיג ליבס. אה, פיג ליבס! So we're figs! We already said figs. Nobody said figs. They said yes, we did. They said one other. No. Yeah, we did. Okay. Not, like there were some people talking at the same time I didn't hear. I'm sorry. Slicha, slicha. My husband says that too. I like the rabbi. When five people talk at the same time, it's got a letter not too. easy to hear everybody. <laughs> anyway, now you understand why Rashi has to add figs. Why is that figs? Now, let's take it a, a step further. One, another rabbi answers, you know why he brought these species? Because vines and figs are more easily damaged by water. The others he could leave. No matter what the, 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 uh, the flood did, but it didn't totally destroy everything. It destroyed all the vibrant uh, fruits and things, but the trees still stayed. They were able to survive the flood. But these two things, the vines and the figs, get damaged by water. So he had to bring them into the ark, and he needed the actual branches to save them. But let me tell you one other interesting shot, which is so fascinating. You know what's going to happen in this story. What, what's going what's to happen in this story, guys? You remember from last year. What yeah, he, gets, he gets drunk in the field. He falls, yeah, yeah, yeah. He falls he gets, asleep, and one, one, two of his sons... Come yeah. and one of them laughs and the other one covers him. Wait a minute, you're missing one. The, what about the first, before they covered him came uh, Ham and what did Ham do to his father? Laughed at him. He raped him. He castrated him. Oh yeah. Why did he castrate him? Didn't want him to have more children. They wanted Didn't all the want him to kids. have more children. How did he know he was going to have more children? Because Hashem told him. He's going to recreate, it's repopulate it's the world. Well, Hashem can tell him a lot of things, but why does he think that Noah might take him up on that? Well, the answer is because, because he planted trees <coughs> whose fruit would bring physical desire. And the, med, the Gemara says, and figs are a aphrodisiac. We know that because that, according to Medris, the fig was the eight sadats. That's where they sold the leaves together. And right away, that brought to man more physical desire. So the fig is what presents, uh, presents a lot more desire in man. So therefore, that's why he castrated him, because he knew he was trying to save the figs. And saving the figs, he's going to want to have more kids, therefore he castrated him. And now you understand there was something else that was planted first. Okay, that's an interesting side point, but I think it's fascinating. Okay, so let's, let's sum up what we have so far. Okay, so far we have, now the Pusik now makes a lot of sense. Now if we read according to Rashi, Vayoch al-Noach means, and Noach mundaned himself. Okay? How did he mundane himself? Well, we're calling him an Isha Dama. Well, is that such a bad thing to be called an Isha Dama? I mean, of course, he's a man who has great affinity to the land. He's got to rebuild the land. So we'll have to see. Vayita Karim, and he plants a vineyard. Okay. So let's take a look at first point over here. So there was nothing wrong with him planting the vineyard, but Rash is saying, what was the problem? He should have planted something else instead. So Rabbi Rucham Lavovitz says the following thing. He says, this Tostik teaches us a lesson regarding the importance of priorities and proper priorities. There are things in life that we must do in this world. There's no question about it. We got lots of obligations, but priorities define what a person will become. And if you prioritize one thing over another, then that defines who you are. Now, let's take a look at something fascinating. And now you're gonna see Ish is gonna mean a heck of a lot more after I show you the following. 
Let's go back to the first Pasuk in the Parsha. The first Pasuk in the Parsha, right over here. Vreshi, six now. Okay? Janet, do me a favor and just read the words. Just read the words. Take yourself off of mute. Right here. This is the line I want you to read. Go ahead, Janet. 6.9. Okay. Um, Ale, Poldos, Noah, Noah, Ish, Sadiq, Tamim. Okay. Very nice. Ale, Poldos, Noah. What does that mean, guys? The generations. These are the generations. Noah is what? Ish. Pleasant. Pleasant. Ish. 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 And a man of a man of Kadosh. A man right. of a good man. A, not a good man, a tzaddik. A tzaddik. A tzaddik. Tamim, a complete tzaddik. Not just any old tzaddik. Not a half-baked tzaddik. A tzaddik yeah. tamim. Mm -hmm. And when did we say this about Noah? Before Hashem ever spoke to him about the flood. Now, what has happened in three chapters? Noah was called the Ish Tzadik. Now I want to ask you if you get a, if you'd like to have on your uh, uh, on your uh, what do you call it on, on the, on the cemetery on your tombstone whatever you call it the gravestone over there which one would you like to be called this or this? Tzadik. Which one you want to be? Ish Tzadik or Ish Noadama? Yeah, I did. I did. So what has happened in three chapters? He's Noah a level or two. has descended from Ish Sadiq to Ish Adama. Now, what happened? What went wrong? Well, guess what? Like for many people, a spiritual descent doesn't happen overnight. A spiritual descent can be very subtle. It's not always a dramatic rebellion or an instant change of lifestyle. Noah, he did one thing wrong. He misplaced his priorities and planted what should have been a later crop ahead of what should have been an earlier planting. And this is the first message we have to understand. We define ourselves by our priorities. Yeah. Okay? Now, now, what what should he have done? Well, we see what he should have planted wheat. He, I mean, obviously he had to plant things, but the fact is, if you're that interested in the wine, well, there's two types. You know, isha dama means a man that's very concerned that the that the, the land grows properly. But if the first thing you're growing is is a vineyard, and interestingly, it doesn't say he planted. A vine, a vine, if you look in Rashi, is a zmora, is a one vine. What's a vineyard? Tell me what a vineyard is exactly. Lot, an orchard, lots of vines. Lots yeah. of vines, yeah. lots of vines. You know why you have to have, if you just grow one vine, you're not going to make a lot of wine. You just have some grapes. <laughs> If you want to, if you know, you, you, you plant one vine, you're going to have grapes. You're not having wine. You plant a vineyard. Now that means you want wine. So that means the first thing on his mind. Now we can definitely rationalize this because remember, give wine to the bitter of soul. He had a tough life. But be that as it may, you define yourself by our priorities. And we begin to see how the tzaddik yesod olam did not um, change from being a tzaddik to a non-tzaddik overnight. And this is where the Torah is teaching us a very valuable lesson, as we'll see as we continue to study. Noach did not do one avera in the book. He didn't do any sins. He did everything Hashem told him to do. Hashem told him to build the Teva. He built the Teva. But the thing is, Rabbi, did, wasn't he supposed to encourage uh, uh, Kal Israel to do Teshuvah to prevent the flood? Hashem, Hashem never told him to do that. What did Hashem tell him to do? 
Bill. Hashem says, I'm, I'm just, if you want to know Bill more about Shiva. that, you should listen to last night's Parsha class. Gets more into your question, Jay, where we discuss that. But Hashem said one thing, I'm destroying the world, finish. Now, build a boat, uh, save, you're going to save your family. People are going to come by, you're going to tell them there's going to be a flood and you're going to die if you don't do tshuva and finish. Now, if Noah wanted to take another initiative, maybe yes, maybe no, but he didn't do anything. Again. He did not do an Avera. He did not do an Avera. But you would think a Sadiq would know that. Maybe. You'd think a Tzaddik would know that. Yeah. I want to ask you a question. Do we have any um, precedent for him to know it from? You know, Jay, we all sit on the on the on the lap of three and a half thousand years of Torah history. Yeah. Okay. That taught us a lot of lessons. What lessons exactly did he learn and who did he learn it from? Adam Adam and Eva. Yeah, Adam Arishan. Let's see what Adam Arishan did. He didn't listen to God. That's what he learned yeah, from sure. Arishan. Yeah. You know, like like what what else is there to learn from? Let's let's put it this way. The whole world was being corrupt and he wasn't. Wasn't that a good thing? Wouldn't you say that's why he's a tzaddik, isn't it? The whole world's going to hell. The whole (laughs) world is immoral and this and that. And he is following. He's the only guy who's following the seven Noahide laws. Now think about that. The whole world doesn't keep it. Just him. That makes him a big tzaddik in my book. Whoever taught him that he should try to change people? They don't look like a friendly bunch of people, do they? Oh, they were violent. They're very violent people. He was keeping himself down, didn't want to get affected by them. He did a good job. He raised three children, and they were all worthy enough to be saved. And they married women that were worthy enough to be saved. And on top of that, what does he do? He builds the ark. He's a laughing stock in the world. He was known as the one Meshuggahner of the world. Man, so you're building such a big boat, not even next to a lake. There's no means to transport it. You know, you guys think we're all living in the 21st century. What do you mean? Let's just take a trailer and move it out somewhere. They're looking, you're a machine, you're making a boat over here. What are you making a boat over here for? So he is the, he's the object of scorn for 120 years. He does not stop building it. And all the stuff he has to get, the food and this and the animals and this, and then the whole year. And what does he get for it? A broken leg. God tells him the seven Noah I lost. He never violated any one of those. What do you see? To be a tzaddik yesod olam, you got to be really on top of your game. You got to be on top of your game in, in the greatest way. And Rav Simcha Wasserman said the following. He says he did not do one Avera. That was not a problem. But you know what? He he didn't keep the level of intensity up. He did not keep the level of intensity up. You know, like for, for 120 years, he built the ark, which was incredibly difficult. For one year, it was incredibly impossible. Now, he did all that. And what was the mistake? The mistake was... He should have continued to do that when he went out of the ark. He was saving humanity, right? He was doing incredible things. He fed the right? He did everything. What should he have done? And as, as tired as he was, when he went out of the ark, he said, I need to carry on for humanity. I need to feed the rest of the world. I need to make sure that humanity continues And if you see that your mission is to continue with this, you would have planted wheat or vegetables. You don't plant a vineyard. A vineyard is for someone who is depressed, even though it's understandable 
But what is it? Hulin, it's mundane. It's saying I'm not continuing the path of greatness that I've been following. And that's what Chazal are saying. He made himself mundane. You hear what's going on over here. Uh, he, he, he stopped being on top of his game. He did everything right. There was nothing wrong with this man. You might say, why didn't he reach out and try to, you know what? He had no one to teach him that. You can't fault him for that. But you, you were really, for 121 years, you were extending yourself beyond. But you know what a Sadiq Yisod Olam does? He never stops extending himself. Yeah. Now, why is it that what did the Medrash say? That who's the last? Why? Who did, who did God say for last? Avram, right? Because if Avram fails, I'm finished. So let's take a look at another planter. Okay? And let's go ahead 15 chapters. Look where I've made my mark here. Now you know what the word vaita means, right? Because we had it right over here. Look at uh, Noah, the Isha, the Ma, Vayita. What does he plant? A Karen, right? Let's go to another person and uh, wonder who we're talking about. Vayita, whoever this person is, and he planted an A shell. I don't know what that is yet. Be Shava in a place called Be'er Shava. Avraham. Vayikra Shav, and he called there to shame Hashem, kill him in the name of God. Who was that? Avraham. Let's see what Rashi says. What is an A shell? It's a Mata shel shel tmarim. We'll see. So Rav and Shmuel have a machlokis. One said it was an orchard from which to supply fruit for the guests at their meal. The other said it was an inn for lodging, in which there were all kinds of fruits. And we can speak of planting an inn, for we find the expression planting used of tents. As Vayita, oh, hello, he pitched his tent. So what did he pitch? An A shell in the middle of the desert, a five-star holiday inn. That's what he planted. And look, look at this beautiful, look at the word A shell. So some say it's a type of an orchard, but look what the rabbis say. The mentor says the word A shell is an acronym for, you see, Aleph stands for Achila, which is eating. Shin stands for letter Shitia, which is drinking. And Lamed stands for, or Lina, which is either sleeping or accompanying. There's two different ways, Lina or Levaya. So there's two uh, different Lameds there. That's what he planted. Now, why did he plant it? You know why he planted that? Because, and he called in the name of God. What did Avram do? He makes a huge holiday in in the middle of the desert. People would come. He would feed them incredibly good food. And then comes the end of the meal. And the guy says, okay, what do I owe you? And what does Avram say? You don't owe me anything. What, I don't owe you anything? No, there's one thing. You know why you don't owe me? Because it's not mine. I mean, it's not yours. Don't yeah. thank me. Thank God. It's got the Amazon. And they say, who is that? Who's God? So Adam, the, Adam, the, Adam has that foot in the door to start explaining all about God and how God created the world and everything he did. And he says, you know, if you want the meal for free, all you got to do, yeah, I got this little Birchat Amazon card. I'd like you to thank the Almighty for the meal. The guy would say, I don't believe in God. Then Aram says, okay, the bill is, uh, you know, getting filet mignon in the middle of a desert. That's a, that's $500 a plate. Cold beer in the middle of the desert, that's a $50 a drink. So your bill will be a, a $1,000, please. I said, you know what? What did you say about thanking God? Yeah, yeah. Okay, give me the bench. <laughs> I'm going to thank God. You see, Amram, Amram was, was, a, was a, did this nonstop. That's what he planted. I should put that on mute. That's what, now maybe, uh, uh, maybe Noah wasn't as smart as Avram to plant such a place, but at least should have planted the things that people need. So therefore you see Avram's, 
Avram's inclination was to do for others. He wanted to plant that in for the guests. And Noah was different. He didn't do an Avera. But he merely highlighted the difference between him and Avram. He made himself chulin. This is such a powerful message. What we're being told is we're not dealing with a guy who's a Russia. This guy is a tzaddik. He is a tzaddik. He never lost the tzaddik. But the problem is he thought after all this time, you know, it's enough already. Let me have my own life. And that's called making yourself profane, uh, mundane. In other words, there's nothing wrong, but you were, you were on such a high level. And what happened to this high level over here? And that is where, and a lot of times people sell themselves short. Now there's a lot of things Noah may have done wrong in hindsight. Like why didn't he reach out to other people? Well, maybe he just didn't know. And I don't know, I don't know if that was the final thing that would take him away from being the Tzadik Yesod Olam. The fact we say, well, he should have been Makar of people that I can't fault him on that because you know what? It was hard enough to be what he was and there was no reason, uh, he had no guidance in this. But when you do come out of, into a new world and it's time to plan things, one thing is clear. He does give in to his own um, individual need. He didn't, he didn't steal from anybody. He didn't do anything bad. He said, listen, I, I want to have a beer with the guys. Now, it's not such a terrible thing, Jay, if a friend calls you over, Steve, because let's have a couple scotches. I'm there. That's not a problem, but guess what? When the world needs to be built, you ain't going to be a tzaddik yisod olam. You're not a sinner. You're not a sinner. No one's calling you a sinner, Noah. I do my tools. But imagine what he's what he was doing for the last 101 years. Now, planting a vineyard compared to that, how does that stack up? Having a beer with Rabbi Steinman. <laughs> That's right. You have you have stories of great people. You could have been great, and you just stopped, stopped in the middle of your tracks. And we could we could take it a, a step further. This is uh, you know, one of Captain Kirk's famous lines from uh, Star Trek. You know, I've I've, I've already done it when uh, this was. I think I think I could be wrong. My memory is starting to fail me after a lot of years. I think of the full length movie Star Trek Eight, where they uh, now now Wrath of Khan was a two. This is number eight, where this guy Zarkon wants to blow up the world or something, and uh, they they get the two captains. Captain Picard goes to a place where Captain Kirk, um, in an explosion, went to a place called, uh, like it's Oilam Haba, but I forgot what they called it, you know, Goyish version of Oilam Haba. So, uh, so Picard, Picard finds a way to go to this place to find Kirk. It's like one of these combining two different generations of uh, Star Trek. If you don't know Star Trek, you don't know what I'm talking about, but if you are, you know exactly. The Genesis? What? Of the, the land, the Genesis, wasn't that the Genesis? No, 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 no. that was number was two. That was, that was way Spock before. Side. That was way before. That was Spock side. I, don't really, I forgot what it's called. It was like their idea of Oilam Habo. You know, like the, he was in a time warp, and somehow he ended in this place, and there's just no sense of time. It's like it's like Gun Aiden for a goy, you know. So, 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 so Picard has to find. He says, "There's only one man." I Picard says, "There's only one man I know." Who can take that Zarkon? I can't do it myself. But we haven't seen him in years. It's Kirk. <laughs> so he he has to go to this place to find Kirk. And uh, he says, you know, we need you. And Kirk says, I've already done my bit for king and country. That was the line. I love that line. I've already done my bit for king and country. I want to relax. With that, and, and they have his girlfriend over there, you know, the one he always wanted but never had time for, you know. But anyway, somehow, somehow uh, Picard convinces him to come back. That's, that was a great, that was a great movie. If you, if you, if you still watch movies. But anyway, 
So, what, what, what's the point? Anyway, Kirk goes and he gets killed. And that's the end of Kirk. Uh, I felt I felt bad. You know, I really like a Jewish um, guy. You know, never a Jewish yeah, boy. I, I have a, I have a question. Yeah. What? Why is wine getting such a bad rap? After all, on on Shabbos we elevate wine. I understand. To the level of kiddush. I understand, but what happened to Noah? Well, he got drunk. He got yeah. drunk. He got drunk. Now, is there a sin in getting drunk? No. Simchas Torah and Purim. Well, no, nowhere in the Torah is it a sin to get drunk. But that ain't that you you don't see Reb Steinman getting drunk, right? I mean, it did, what, what Noah was saying, and this was his tragic mistake. He said, I've done my job for the world. There's only so much I can take. Now, you don't realize, like, again, these frontline workers, they deserve all my res our respect. I want to know, how long can a frontline worker stay a frontline worker without some relief? You tell me. And even frontline workers, they still get days off, don't they? Even in the merge, I'm sure they get some days off. You gotta remember nowadays, if you don't get two days off every week, you're like Mamish a slave. Bunch of lazy, soft goonishes. <laughs> People dying from COVID. I've been in ER, I've been in ER for 12 hours. I gotta take a rest. <laughs> what, 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 what's not going to say? I've been in the ER for 120, uh, a whole year without stop. Without stop. He said, I need a break. Guess what? Great people don't take breaks. Great people don't take breaks. You know, and this, and this I think we could say not was the one who invented the concept of retirement. He invented retirement. He said, listen, I've worked pretty good. I've worked hard for 121 years. Right? He's, he's over 600 years old now. Come on. He worked hard to save the world. I'm entitled to you know, have, a, have a good beer, have a good drink. I, I've had enough. And let somebody else take over. So the point of the matter is this idea of retirement is not consistent in Jewish practice. It's not consistent because what does it mean when you say you're retiring? It means I don't have to work anymore. I'm not productive. Now I'm not saying guys, you can't retire, but the conventional understanding of retirement means the assumption is You've been a productive member of society for so many years. Now you're entitled to not have to be productive. Wouldn't you say that's what retirement is? You've earned it. You worked hard for 40, 50 years. You've earned this to end your life without doing anything that's meaningful for the world. Wouldn't you say that's what retirement, classic retirement is? Now, this is against Judaism completely. There's no such thing as retiring, you know, but so what do you mean? I'll tell you what a good, I'll tell you what kosher retirement is. You know who I could say it was a kosher retiree? Yeah, Sam Friedlander. Yeah. You all remember Sam Friedlander? I was going to say that. Agree. Sam Friedlander, he was a doctor. I guess he worked, I don't know, 30, 35, 40 years. I don't know how many years he worked. Productive member of society, no question about it. So what does he do when he retires? He moves to Eretz Yisrael. You know what he does now? He learns star all day long. Yeah, he doesn't make money. He doesn't heal the sick. Okay, that was his job. That was his mitzvah. Comes to a point, you got to get, get tired, get older. So now he just changed to now be a full-time kolo man to learn Torah. You see, that is not really retiring, you see. That's the point over here. So this is the difference between Noah and Avraham. You know, there are some people who say the following. We know the 10th test of Avraham was 
this binding of Isaac. But there are those of the commentators who say that was not the 10th test. You know what they say the 10th <laughs> test was? The 10th test was that when he came back from the Akeda, when he came back from the Akeda, he finds that his wife died and he had to deal with the whole headache of burying her with Ephron and all that. And he did not criticize Hashem and did not complain. And the rabbis asked the following question, how could you say that that was the 10th test? You figure the 10th test would have been the biggest test, right? If I would tell you what was all the biggest test of all was the Akeda, wasn't it? That was clearly the biggest test. How can you come off and tell me, no, 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 there's a test after that. You know what the answer is? Because after he passed the Akeda and no one in their mind could ever believe that could anything happen after that. And Hashem even said, boy, you're great. You're this, you're that, and all that. So Aaron could have then said, I'm retired. God has already given me the Medal of Honor. I got a son, Yitzchak. Let me, let me, let me pack it in. Right, it's Hashem say, you know, you think you're finished with the job? No, no, no. You got a wife. You got a, you got a, you got a barrier. You got another test coming up. I'm not finished with you. And Avram could have said, you know what Avram could have done right after he found out his wife died? He could have planted a vineyard and got himself drunk. But he didn't. Because Avram was the tzaddik you sold all of And that's the point he's saying. That we don't, we don't, we don't ever retire from Avodah Sashem. And this is the mistake that Noah made. Again, so in, in summation, how do we have to send it's all in this one pasuk? That's why I chose this pasuk. You see, you see what's in this one pasuk? It's jam-packed over here. That person says, Well, what's wrong with being an Isha Dhamma? What's wrong with building a karm? There's nothing wrong with it. But there's nothing right with it either. And we have to remember that we're a holy people. We're, we're, I'm Kadosh. So therefore, we have to be careful in terms of if we have certain levels to keep fighting to stay on those levels. And, not, and, and if we just make a small a pause and say, you know, I'm no longer going to be doing these kinds of things. I'm kind of tired of doing all these amazing things. I want to coast out. Then what's going to happen is you're going to Demote yourself from being the Ish Tzadik Tamim to be known at the end of the day as the Ish Adama. And that's a sad uh, commentary on Noah's life. Again, we cannot say he was a failure. The Medrash never said he was a failure. He just never fulfilled the role of Tzadik Yesod Olam. And that's an important thing. So each on our level, not, not all of us are meant to be an ish, uh, 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 tzaddik yisod olam, but we're meant to be the tzaddik that we could be. Because remember, at the end of Pirkei Avos, it says, the Pasuk says, every Jew, in the beginning of Pirkei Avos, every Jew has a portion of the world to come. Right? We all have a portion of them. And it says, va'amcha kulam tzaddikim. And the nation of the Jews were all tzaddikim. In a certain level, we're a tzaddik in our own way. And to be a tzaddik, you got to be working all the time at being a tzaddik. Okay, any questions, comments? We're good? We're good. Thank you, Rabbi. All right. Cool. There's time. I have, I, have, I have a question. Go ahead, please. When it says, Vayichal, when Rashi said, like the pasuk, Vayichal noach isha adama veitakerem, doesn't it sound like imitating Hashem? Like by Chulu Hashemayim, by... No, that's not spelled the same way. I by... know. There is half and here it's Chet. That's but a still, big it's, it's, it's a language of... Uh, it's trying to imitate Hashem, no? No, not at all. It's the, no? op it's the opposite. By, okay. by, it's the opposite. Hashem is never by Yocha. Hashem, Hashem is not Chulu. Hashem is Kedusha. No, like said, old, no I'm old. talking about Noah. Noah. Yeah, so Noah said, I'm not interested in this Kedusha anymore. I'm retired. So it's was, exactly the opposite. I was at Tzadik till I'm 621. Now I want to retire from the Tzadik game. I get it now. I get it. Okay. I, well, let me coast. Hashem says, you're not going to coast. You're going to get drunk. And even worse things are going to happen because of that. 
So that's, uh, that's and, and that's a lot of things in Frumkite. A lot of people who are from people or Bali Chuva, they really grow and grow and they say, now that's enough. So I must speak. I don't, have to, I don't have to keep doing this. I don't have to keep learning that Yomi. I don't have to keep doing this. I, don't have to do this. I, can, I can take a break. And you see this also uh -huh. taking a break because then you're going to end up from being the East Sadiq to the Isha Adama. Oh, okay. if, not, if not worse. Okay. okay. Very Thank good. You. Have a great day, everybody. Zai Take care. Take care, everybody. Stop the Bye.